Hey, it's Matty P. Have you noticed that the adventure hook in the new starter set is a little bit unclear because we have five different pregens with five different reasons for adventuring. The cleric goes to Dragon's Rest to investigate their visions of impending doom emanating from the island. The fighter goes to Dragon's Rest because they want guidance on their quest to fulfill their heroic destiny. The paladin goes to Dragon's Rest because they are on a pilgrimage to the cloister to contemplate their place in the world. The rogue goes to Dragon's Rest because they've heard of an ex-guild member who stole a bunch of gold from the Gilded Gallows Rogues Club. <laughs> and the wizard is heading to Dragon's Rest because they've heard about all these magical secrets up there in the observatory. And even though some of these character motivations are actually pretty rad, I'm looking at you, Rogue. If you end up using these five different character motivations, you're gonna split the focus of the campaign. You're gonna end up with your players asking that dreaded question, hey, Dungeon Master, why are we on this island again? And when you hear a question like that, where the players don't understand the goal of the campaign, that means you have a weak adventure hook. So today we are gonna fix this problem together. And we're gonna fix it with a custom prologue quest that unites the party with a common goal and a common reason for heading to Stormwreck Isle. There are two steps to this. Firstly, we're gonna make characters with the party. We're gonna make the backstories together all sitting around the table. And as a dungeon master, I'm gonna show you how to take little hooks from various points in the adventure and insert them into the player's backstory so that the lore is relevant to the characters. And the second step is you need to devise a prologue quest. Now this prologue quest has a couple of properties. The first is it needs to be dragon themed because we're tying into the dragon themes of the actual adventure. Now this prologue quest happens before the actual adventure and it's something the whole party work together as a unit. But here's the real tricky thing. At the end of this prologue quest, the party has hit some kind of impassable obstacle, something that is only solvable by the aid of a benevolent dragon. And that is the reason the party are adventuring. But first, do you want to win a copy of Dragons of Stormwreck Isle? Because I'm giving away a digital version of this adventure every time one of these videos releases. And to enter the competition, all you have to do is click on the link downstairs and join the Facebook group. Don't worry, it's fun, it's good, lots of resources there. And also, I found this. Like, did you drop this? Is this your subscrib? I don't see an E anywhere, so if you see one, let me know and we'll put it with the subscribe. You are never gonna find that E. Let's talk about making characters and inserting the lore from the adventure in those character backstories. Cause the first session when I run this campaign is taken up by one, making characters, two, doing the prologue quest. Then we do the skill challenge of the ship sinking as the players sail to the island. And then we do the combat with the zombies. So these two, these first two should take up like half your session. So. Characters. I just asked my players to prepare the vaguest notion of what their character background is. Like, uh, what do they look like? What weapons do they use? Uh, do they have any scars or tattoos or anything? And it's something like that, right? And then we go around in a circle and ask each other one question. So I might ask the drow, hey drow, why did you leave the Underdark? And the drow might ask the rogue, hey rogue, what is the biggest heist you've ever pulled up? And then the rogue might ask the artificer, hey artificer, is it artificer? Hey artificer, what is the invention you're currently working on? But when we're answering these questions, it gets a little bit fun. I'm suggesting you use something called Rory Story Cubes. Here's what they are. I've got them in this box. These are a set of dice with a bunch of different image prompts on them. You could also use a digital version, something like Zero Dice, which I've got a, a link downstairs to. It's totally free. So the idea is you ask them a question. Hey, Rogue, why did you leave the Underdark? And then we roll these symbols and what do we get? The dice on the left looks like a sick face. So there was actually a plague, a sickness in the Underdark that was uh, affecting all my family. And I had to leave for my own safety. And then the middle dice is a mask. So when I was in the overworld, I had to wear a metaphorical mask and hide my identity. Uh, and the last one is somebody falling. So I'll say, eventually that mask fell off, right? And I learned to love myself and be myself out here in the harsh light of day. 
And that's my character's journey from the Underdark. But as a dungeon master, you've got a very important role here to play because I want you to be actively listening to the answers the players are giving. And you're gonna insert the law hooks from the campaign into these backstories by listening for keywords. If the players ever say uh, something about a thieves guild, so no, my character was in a thieves guild, but he got kicked out for being too good of a thief. Then that thieves guild is the Gilded Gallows. Oh, my character's whole family was slain by a deadly beast. Well, what do you know, player? That deadly beast was an owlbear, which is referencing the random encounter from the module. Oh, my character is a sailor and his ship was sunk by a, a big sea monster. Hey. That sea monster was a giant undead octopus, which is the same octopus from the Myconid Caves. My character's whole village was burnt down by villainous mercenaries. I am sorry to hear that, player. Those mercenaries were called the Azure Wolves, which is Varnoff's mercenary group. And I swear to Bahamut, Dungeon Master, if you have the Golden Goose moment where one of your players mentions anything to do with constellations or the sky or moon or stars, you gotta put in the king killer star there somehow. Like I'm not saying you have to, but if you have the opportunity, you should take it. Ideally when you're putting those hooks in there, you will be quick on your feet, which means you have to know the module and the lore pretty well. You should have read the book by now. So you want to kind of give the impression that, oh, this isn't a big deal. Yeah, there was a star called the King Killer Star. Isn't that a cool name? Oh, it's not a big deal. Yeah, there's maybe they could be called the Azure Wolves, that mercenary group. You just want to be real cash about it. And then when it actually comes up in the campaign, your players are gonna think that you're so clever for tying their backstory into the campaign when in actuality, it was the other way around. And here's where we work on that prologue quest, that unifying moment that binds the party together. And I think this is the real juice. Regardless of how you approach this step, there is something you must do, okay? You have to cement this in the player's imagination the goal of the campaign, the goal of the party, is to find Lord Adron. And the prologue quest is just an excuse for us to cement that goal in the players' minds. In the same way in the Lost Minds of Fandelva, where I was like, hey, give the party this puzzle box, and you know, that's kind of their motivation or whatever. That's what we're doing today. But the motivation is they have to find Lord Adron. There's a weird thing with this prologue quest though, because I don't want you to treat this like a traditional adventure or a scene in a regular D&D game. We're not rolling dice. We're not rolling ability checks. There's no threat of us having to roll initiative and go into combat. The players aren't gonna die in this prologue quest. We're not playing Traveler over here. The thing is, this is more like a game of Mad Libs. It's a collaborative brainstorming session where the players are looking for opportunities to insert themselves into this prologue quest and saying, oh, I did that. I found." Let me, I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. I reckon there's two ways you could do this prologue quest. The easy way is on my Patreon right now, where I've got written out three different complete prologue quests. And each of these detail a threat that is facing the players, leaves gaps for the players to insert their own solutions like Mad Libs, and they all end in, hey, if this is a dragon problem we're dealing with, we need a dragon solution. Let's go to that island. In one of these prologue quests called Famine of the Black Drakes, the players stumble upon this abandoned village and one of the players finds a clue as to why that village is abandoned. And the quest asks them to go, hey, could one of you players please nominate yourself to be the person that found the clue? And could you tell me how you found the clue, whatever it is? Now I'm gonna give you that whole prologue quest for free. I'm just going to flash it up on the screen. You can take a screenshot, but I want to let you know if you have $5 to spare, then please sign up to the Patreon, even just for a month, uh, because that's the way I can keep making this stuff. There is a cost to making these PDFs and I spend literally every waking moment working on D&D stuff. So help me out if you can. Bam! There it is. <laughs> the second, a little bit more risky way of doing this prologue quest is to use your story cubes again. This is how I did it the last two times I ran this adventure. I just gave each character a story cube and said, roll this. This is how we're gonna build our quest. And I'll give you an example right now. Let's pretend I've got three players. Okay, mushroom, question mark, clothes, drying in the sun. Okay, players, you've been hired by a druid to go get a very rare mushroom. Um, hey, player one, can you please tell me 
what that mushroom looks like and what you had to do to get it. Okay, great. You succeeded in getting the mushroom. Congratulations. Um, when you returned it to the druid, he gave you a payment as, as requested. Um, and he said he was going to brew a very special tea from it. And the next time you saw him, question mark, the next time you saw him, he didn't recognize you. In fact, he didn't even know who he was. He had complete amnesia. Isn't that weird? And of course, you guys want to help him. Um, what did you guys do to try and help him? What was your first solution? Where did you take him? Okay, you took him to like a temple to get like greater restoration cast on him. Great, that's a, such a great idea. So you took him to this temple, but when he got there, there was something weird about his clothes. Like maybe there were some weird spores in his clothes and the forgetfulness kind of started to spread. It didn't affect you guys so much because you have metal armor and stuff. Maybe the metal wards it off. But like all these people, all the monks in their robes, they started to forget stuff. They forgot the spell, Greater Restoration. Now in your research, what you found is that there is a cure to this forgetfulness mushroom. It's called the Mushroom of Disremembering. And the cure you found in your research is a, uh, is a bottled, Dragon's fart. Go go find a dragon's fart. That's the adventure. Woo! By the way, did you find the hidden E? If you guessed the big E that was given the strength and will to govern the blackboard, you have been deceived. For in secret, another E was forged. Get wrecked. I mean, subscribe. <laughs> Hey, I really hope that was helpful for you. Do me a favor, leave a comment and stuff. Uh, and if you're super keen on supporting the channel, please join the ranks of these patrons downstairs and get your very helpful five page PDF on everything we covered today. And uh, don't forget to join the Facebook group if you want to win a copy of the adventure. We're going to keep covering Dragons of, what is this? Dragons of Stormwreck Isle? That's it. <laughs> We're going to keep covering this uh, for the next like 10 weeks or so. So please stick around and I'll see you next time.